Welcome to the Supercast. I'm your host, Superintendent Anthony Godfrey. We're just starting out a new Jordan School District podcast that's designed to educate, inform, and hopefully entertain you. We're going to talk about a lot of different topics related to education, students, teachers, parents. Some of it will just be informative no matter who you are. So we hope you'll stay tuned and stay in touch with us and keep listening to the Supercast. For today, we're going to start by a quick stop at Terra Linda Elementary School to see how the new school year is going. My name is Joshua Holmes. Tell me a little bit about second grade so far. How's it going? It's going great and I love second grade and my most favorite thing is recess. Tell me how you like second grade so far. I like it a lot because I really like doing math and learning. That's great. Well, that's what we're here for. I love because we get to do coloring activities and we get to do science. You know what you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. I want to be a veterinarian and a dog washer. Do you have a dog at home? Yeah. Her name is Tuna. Her name is Tuna? Wow. Do you have other dogs? No. I have a bunny and chickens and a cat and fish. Wow. Do you, so your parents must love animals as well, is that right? Mm-hmm. We have six chickens. They're all named breakfast foods. <laughs> so what are your chickens' names? Um, waffle, pancake, bacon, oatmeal, and mashed potato. Is mashed potato in your family, is that a breakfast food? Uh, yeah. Well, just another reason to want to visit your house. I, uh... I, I can't think of anyone who would do a better job as a veterinarian than you, so uh, congratulations. In second grade, I did not know what I wanted to do, and I certainly didn't have the qualifications you already have, so good job, Nola. That's really thank exciting. You. Mrs. Olau, thank you for letting me talk with your second grade students. Now, you said that they all made an assumption about me when I walked in. Yeah, every single one of them asked if you were the President of the United States, and they were pretty excited. They were pretty excited yeah. at the idea that yeah. the president was coming. Definitely. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank much. you for coming. Have a great nice. year. Yeah, nice to see you. We'll share more of my visit here at Terra Linda Elementary School later, but now let's head back to the Supercast studio where I sit down with two students from West Jordan High School who have some great words of wisdom for students and parents alike. And here with us, we have two seniors looking at their senior year ahead of them. It's going to go fast, ladies. I know old people are going to keep telling you that, <laughs> like me. But uh, we have Emily and Francesca in studio. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself here. So I am Emily Levante. I'm going to be a senior at West Jordan High School. I am the student body president this year, and I'm on dance company. And I'm Francesca Padovano. I'm also going to be a senior at West Jordan High School. And like Emily, I really like to dance, but I'm not on dance company. <laughs> I just dance by myself, <laughs> you know. And um, I am also on student government, and I'm the communications officer. Tell me, now that you're on the cusp of senior year and it's already going fast and it's going to fade away quickly, <laughs> as, uh, as uh, we say, once we... Uh, those of us who went to high school in the 1900s, um, <laughs> what, tell, tell me, um, as you look back, what have you liked most about your school experience? Are there moments or people? Hmm. I think, I think for me, what I've liked and, and what I'm excited for going into senior year is just really feeling so close to everyone in the grade it's like I had classes with these people sophomore year and these people junior year and I went to this game and saw them here and and now it just feels like it's our third year together we've known each other for so long and um, I don't know those are those are my favorite memories is seeing someone um, like that I had a class with in a different in a different um, place in school and just forming like all those relationships and yeah, that was the That's best great. part to me. That's great. Francesca? Mine's very similar to Emily's <laughs> as well. It's just the high school experience is just something so fun and something people only dream of that live in other countries or see movies or other things. That sure. America's high school is really cool. <laughs> I just think it's really yeah. cool. So I really like going to 
all of the games, sports games, football, mm-hmm. volleyball, basketball. Everything is so fun. Just seeing everybody progress as all the years go mm-hmm. and see what they go into if they actually live out their dreams or if they change courses like some of us want to do. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, that's very interesting to me. That's great. So are there some things that um, I guess I, I would have to agree when I look back it's the same thing. It's the relationships and kind of the sense of community and belonging and that mm-hmm. we're, we were all in it together, yeah. like yeah. you said, and we change and we learn, and, but we're all doing it together. Well, we're going to take a quick break and uh, we'll be right back. Stick around. These ladies have more wisdom to share. So we'll be right back. Hey, you okay? Uh, yeah, I just have a lot of stuff going on in my head. You need to talk, dude. Stop hiding behind the happy face. Talk with no filter. Get the Safe UT app. Download it now. Available on the Apple App Store, Google Play, or safeut.org. Welcome back. We're back with uh, Emily and Francesca, seniors at West Jordan High School. And uh, they've talked about some of their goals and the positive experiences they've had over the years. Uh, I want to ask you now, you've both made the most of high school. Francesca, you came in from another school, Mm -hmm. dove in, made friends, got involved in your in-student government. Emily, you're heavily involved with dance company and government, and and you've been with a group of of students for a long time, and you both have the goal of of helping get people to activities and feel part Mm -hmm. of a community. So what advice do you have for parents to help their children get involved? Maybe they're starting out as a sophomore at the school, maybe they are coming from another school, maybe boundaries have changed. Um, What advice do you have for them to have a positive experience? Because the social part of high school can (laughs) produce a lot of anxiety. Yeah, I, so actually my my freshman year coming into high school, I went to um, Ochre Hills in Riverton and so I didn't really know anyone going into my sophomore year and I think just joining student government right off the bat, and if it's not that, just joining anything that that interests you, and just even you know going to the audition just to make those connections and get to um, get to know people, I think is so important. And I know it's easier said than done, but just to put yourself out there and to not be afraid of failing when you are trying out for something or trying to join a club, um, because it will. Yeah, I just think it pays off so much, and that helps make school a way more comfortable and, and fun place to be. So I would say be encouraging um, your kids to to find things that they're interested in and to, to be involved in a group at the school because that gives you more reason to be there and to build that community. I like what you said. I, I do think sometimes we go into that, and we're worried about not being good enough to even try out. Yeah. I, I remember we had a great runner in my high school, and I thought – Boy, that would be kind of cool. I would like to do that. But I assumed that everyone had to be great like him. I didn't mm-hmm. know that as long as you were willing to get up early and run and you were crazy <laughs> enough to keep doing yeah. it, they would let you be on the team. <laughs> I wish I had known that looking yeah. back. So I think it's great advice. Dive in. Try out. There's a lot to do. And um, um, with folks like you leading government, there will be more and more opportunities. So, yeah. Francesca, how about you? What advice do you have for parents to help students feel a part of things at high school? Um, well, like Emily said, a very important part is that parents need to encourage children to just go out there, and an, a parent's opinion is very important to students mm-hmm. especially, and um, there's a spot for everybody at our school. There's clubs for everything, and if you don't like one thing, great, find something else, but it's definitely that, just encouraging and being for the student if they do end up going into that club or that team to support and go to all their events and just be happy for them. Great. So to kind of pave the way to be sure that they have the opportunity to go. Yes. I think I just, I love something that you said that parents' opinions matter to kids. And I think that's something that even my parents and I have talked about this before that they've said, you know, with my two older brothers that they weren't really sure if, you know, going to his wrestling match, going to his band tournament, does it really matter? And it does. Um, even even just being willing to make the time to, you know, drop, drop your kid off, like, at the school to go to odd jobs or to go to a football game, 
um, and just knowing what's going on. I know that teenagers can sometimes be like, no, I don't want to talk about it. Don't want to talk about my day because I've been that person. Um, but just as much as they'll let you in, just take advantage of that because I'm so glad that my parents have stayed um, as in the loop with everything that's going on at my school as they have and they've definitely been the ones to encourage me to go to things sometimes that I maybe didn't want to and um, yeah. So in other words, even if the outer signs suggest that kids don't want parents involved, deep down they really do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's great. That's great advice. So you talk to a lot of kids, you know a lot of kids, you hear the struggles and, and troubles. So what are some things, you know, we've all been through high school, adults have all been through high school in one way or another. So sometimes we remember it and think that it's still the way that it was. Um, what are some things that just talking with your friends or your personal experiences, what are you th some things that you wish adults knew about high school that sometimes they don't seem to understand about what it's like? Not your own parents or teachers, but just the things that you hear. Let me think about this for a minute. <laughs> You've already told us something really important, which is students care about parents being involved and it's important to them. And they listen, and it matters mm -hmm. what they say. Maybe it's just that there's so many opportunities out there that they should be aware of that maybe weren't there when they were in high school, and that they should really look into what's out there at the school at first. That's a great point, because I remember touring a high school as a teacher, and I'd been teaching for a while, I'd been out of high school for a little bit, but I thought, it wasn't that long. I still know what's going on in high school. Mm -hmm. And I went back and visited, and I had no idea what was going on because things had changed so much in a positive way. So that's good advice. Yeah. Just be aware that there may be some opportunities that you don't know about, and to help connect your child to those opportunities, you need to investigate that and explore. Yeah, definitely. Great. I think... Um this is actually something I was also talking about with my mom the other day that when you look back on, you know, trials, challenges, things that have been difficult in your life, it's so easy to say, well, why was that hard for me? That what like looking back on it because you've been through it and so it doesn't seem it doesn't seem so difficult now. And um, I don't know, for parents and, and teachers to just say, um, for the things that they do know are still going on, the things that haven't changed. Um, you know, the stress over homework, worrying about your social circle, that it's not just a shallow, superficial thing. I mean, high school is just a place where your school, your extracurriculars, everything is so concentrated. And um, when you're removed from that, I think it's easy to, I mean, I shouldn't say it's easy, but from, from what I've heard from adults and, and teachers is that they feel like it isn't as difficult as it actually is. So just trying to realize that when you're not in that situation, you might not have the same perspective and to just really listen to what kids have to say. That makes a lot of sense. And it's good advice overall. Really listen to what people have to say. Yeah. And if, you know, we made it through, and so sometimes <laughs> you can think, well, I made it through, so it can't be that bad. You'll yeah, get through it. Yeah. And instead, like you said, it's great advice. Just listen really carefully. We're going to take another quick break, and then we'll be back with Emily and Francesca and uh, they get to ask me some questions when we come back. So stick around, stay with us. How many times do you hear your child ask, what's for breakfast or what's for lunch? Find out what's on the menu at your child's Jordan School District School every day by simply downloading the NutriSlice app to your smartphone or desktop. The NutriSlice app gives you quick and easy access to daily menus, pictures of meal choices, and nutrition information along with allergens present in the foods. The app also allows students and parents to give feedback on food. Download the NutriSlice app today and enjoy school breakfast and lunch in your school cafeteria. And we're back with Emily and Francesca, both seniors at West Jordan High School. I've been asking them a few questions. They've given some great advice and perspective about what high school in the 2019-20 school year is going <laughs> to look like. Um, so now it's their chance to uh, ask questions of me. 
So, uh, Francesca, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, when technology nowadays is really advancing, and I just wanted to know how has that impacted students' achievement um, in the school district? Well, I think that's a great question, and it's a question we need to keep asking ourselves. Technology impacts it for the better because we're able to use technology in ways so that people can learn in completely new ways. Um, in, on the negative side, technology distracts from spending time on homework or spending time learning or experiencing things, and so it's finding that balance and finding healthy, engaging ways to use technology to learn in completely new ways, not just an electronic version of the old way. Yeah. Emily. So I know for like an elementary school, middle school, and a high school, the budgets are obviously all different for those. But do like within that, like all the middle schools, all the high schools, do they have different budgets? And if so, like how do you decide like how resources and money are allocated to to different areas? I think a lot of people wonder that, <laughs> including the principals who receive those budgets. Um, you put money toward the things that you value. And there are some things that we have to do with certain pots of money. So some money is more restricted than other money. And so we, we, we allocate money to schools based on those rules first, that from the state or from the federal government or from grants. But then as a district, we allocate money according to the number of students that you have. Okay. And we try to give as much freedom to each school as we can so that they can accomplish the things that are important to them. But um, school money comes from a lot of different sources, and we try to really help principals make the most of that, and they do a great job. Right. Well, thank you. All right, Francesca, did you have another question? Yes, I do have another question. So every student at every school always has their own level of learning and I was just wondering how what steps are being taken to ensure that every student is learning at their own pace that is something that we concern ourselves with all the time because we want students wherever they start to end the year with at least a year's progress and so there are a lot of different things that we do there we work with teachers to um, help provide support so that they can structure class in a way that allows for what's called individualized or personalized learning. Then we also use technology, which you mentioned earlier, because that allows us to do some online courses or to do flipped classrooms where you're doing you're learning at home and then you do the work in the classroom, or even um, blended learning where you do work at your own pace and connect with the teacher on a regular basis. So we're trying lots of methods. That's the real trick to trying to, uh, I think, make the most of education is to personalize that for the individual. So we keep working on it. Okay, that's really cool. Thank you. So across the board, what would you, just in general, how are high schools in the district excelling and what's something that a lot of them are struggling with, like trends? trends in both those areas? I think high schools have done a great job of expanding the options for students. We have our tech centers, we have just a yeah. large variety, we've added sports, we've added clubs, so I think a lot has been added that way. We continue to improve in graduation rates, and so graduation goes up and up, and ACT scores are going up and up. But I think the thing we always have to focus on, I'm going to go back to your question, Francesca, and that is that we just want to be sure that we're meeting the needs of the individual student. And it's hard to do that with mm -hmm. class sizes so large, mm -hmm. and with our schools yeah. so large. Yeah. But we have teachers dedicated to that. And, and so that's the challenge, I think. And the other is socio, social and emotional wellness, just making sure that everyone feels a part of things and that they feel connected and they feel supported and that their self-worth is there in place. Right. That's good for us to hear because yeah. that's, that's our job. So Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, I mean, across the whole district, it's nice to know that that's something that we need to keep like keep on our radar. So. We're constantly thinking about that. And like you said, it's students like you that make the big difference because you're able to connect and, and help people feel a part of things. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to see how the school year goes. So um, I'm excited for you. 
And Thank thanks very much for spending some of your summer here in the studio. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Supercast. We'll be back again. And remember, education is the most important thing you'll do today. Now, Francesca, can you uh, translate that into Spanish for us? Okay. Y recuerden que la educación es lo más importante que usted puede ser hoy en día. Well said. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time.